Hey guys, what's up? It's Scottish Duck here once again. Right, now, this is going to be my first impressions of, uh, the last story for the Wii. Okay. I did sort of an unboxing of that big, huge collector's edition, so if you want to go, uh, watch that, you know, it's just a couple of videos back. But yeah, let's get into this. Uh, before I begin, though, just a real sort of... I'm doing it again. Just a real sort of, like, cool Wii fact about this, right? I did not know this, okay? You know uh, Nintendo of America recently did that thing with the reversible cover art for uh, Xenoblade? Well, little did I know, Xenoblade in the last story already have that. This is Xenoblade, this is the uh, reversible cover. Nice awesome artwork there from the game. And uh, here's the one from it, this is the last story. Here's that nice little picture of the stargazing scene, really sweet. So yeah, totally didn't know about that, except both cases don't have like a Wii symbol in the title of the game, you know, on the spine like the American one does, but I think it's a little nitpick, but anyway, just thought I'd throw that out there. So yeah, the last story. Now, the reason I'm doing this, this first impressions video is going to be extremely redundant, because it's hardly first impressions now, because I have, um, I've played the game for about 10 hours, so that hardly constitutes first impressions, but again, it doesn't really constitute a review. And I can't do a review for a long time because I'm trying to, I'm trying to limit myself here, guys, because I'm in the last six weeks of my semester at uni, and I really want to study hard for it, you know, to the point where I don't want to continue the game until I'm done, you know. And that right there is a, right now is an indication of how much I'm liking this game, right? I'm so engrossed in it, so loving it, that I don't want to go back and play it until I know for a fact I can sit down for hours and play it without any guilt in the world, you know, I'll, if I was to go and play it now, I'd be like, this game is amazing, I have uni work to do, I should really turn this off, oh, but it's so good, and, yeah, that literally is the case, guys, you know, I just want to have a nice, clear, calm mind for getting into this awesome RPG. So what makes this RPG awesome? Well, um, where the, let me try and think, let me get, think of some first impressions here. Uh, Graphic-wise, uh, the game is nice and beautiful, you know. If you're coming right off of um, Xenoblade, though, uh, the game does actually look a little dated, you know. That's not to say it's bad, far, 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 far from it. It's just that Xenoblade was just so friggin' amazing to look at. But, uh, yeah, it definitely looks like a Wii game. Still a very, you know, aesthetically pleasing Wii game. And technically proficient as well, uh, considering the hardware that it's on anyway. But yeah, it's not bad to look at at all, essentially. Um, the music is amazing. Nobuo Uematsu, you did a good job once again. Uh, particularly the main theme. It's I sometimes have that on loop, like, you know, regularly when I'm working and stuff, and it's just such a awesome song. It really is. Um, yeah. The story kind of picks up real quick, actually, you know, it, I was a bit confused at first, I didn't know what the hell was going on, and it was thrown in flashbacks everywhere, and I was like, what's happening here? So, the story didn't leave the biggest first impression, but as it went on, you know, it did get really good, you know, the characters were all really nice, and I'm really digging the love story between, um, the two characters, I'm, I'll, I guess I'll not say their names, but yeah, the two characters on the cover, basically, they fall in love, spoiler alert, and... I do actually like how that love story sort of kicks off as quick as the story does, you know? Because, you know, for the PS1 and PS2 era, we basically had love stories that were just... They weren't outright, they were just implied, you know? You would have the two characters sitting around a campfire after fighting a bunch of monsters. And, you know, there was nothing direct about it. You just sort of made your own... The player was just sort of, oh, these characters are in love. This is so awesome. But yeah, it's... They come right out and say it, basically, in this game, and I actually really appreciate that. Um, what else? Combat is fucking amazing. It truly, truly is, guys. Uh, incredibly unique, right? You know, Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, I've not played the game, but apparently Xenoblade Chronicles did borrow a bit from Final Fantasy XII, and as far as I'm concerned, it also perfected it. I can't confirm this because I've not played Final Fantasy XII, but that's just what I've heard. But last story, I've never played an RPG like this. It's just so fast-paced, so simple, and just got a lot of unique quirks about it that I've never seen before. It's just so fun. Fa fast-paced, ugh. It is pretty easy, granted. Um, 
How it works is, like Final... Like Final Fantasy XIII and Xenoblade, your health regains to full after each battle, but you also have a set number of lives for each battle, and when you uh, run out of HP, you'll be uh, incapacitated for a while, but then you'll come back to life and you'll lose a life, you know? And then when you run out of lives, that's when you'll be KO'd, and that's when you have to, you know, use a particular spell to revive your character. At least I think that's how it is. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't really noticed any of my characters dying, you know? You can revive them quickly by walking over them, uh, granted, but uh, otherwise the game is pretty easy. You know, I'm near the beginning, I suppose, so that's to be expected. Um, the actual structure of the game, I would say, is actually closer to... A good way to describe it would be Final Fantasy XIII done right. Now, I'm one of those haters of Final Fantasy XIII. I did not like that game at all. But this game is relatively linear, you know, especially with the dungeons, you'll kind of just be plodding along, plodding along, oh, fighting, psh, 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 plodding along, plodding along, plodding along, oh, cutscene, plodding along, plodding along, fighting again, you know, stuff like that. But in between the dungeons, you do get to go to um, towns and stuff, or just little hub areas with shops, uh, spots where you can level up. Leveling up, I'll come to that in a minute, yeah, and just a bunch of side quests as well. So, yeah, and as far as I can tell, I can't go back to any of those areas. Maybe there will be some sort of option later in the game, but for now, I don't really have incentive to go back because it is easy enough to grind up and shit, so uh, no quarrels with that. Uh, Leveling up, how well, I guess I'll go into that. Um, you actually have to find these orange... No, not orange, red. Well, I guess it doesn't matter, but... You find these red circles on the ground, and you walk over them, and then you hit this technique you can do that's assigned to a button called gathering. And that'll instantly make enemies just spawn all around you and you can, you know, hit them and stuff. And you can repeat that as many times as you want to grind and stuff. So yeah, you don't really walk around and initiate battles. You literally have to stand there and make them happen yourself. Which has never really been done before, to my knowledge. I can't think of something like that happening, but it's not bad. Not bad at all. I can just totally sit there for like an hour and fight off a bunch of enemies getting up, getting my level up as much as possible. I enjoy it. Um, right, uh, was there anything else I wanted to talk about? I think that's everything, guys. But yeah, this game is really fucking good. I actually was on a VG charts there. It was out a week today. Uh, at the t I'm recording this the Friday after it came out. And uh, I was really pleased to see that it actually outsold Xenoblade's first week. You know, Xenoblade in Europe sold about... Actually, did it? Okay, I, I take that back. I can't confirm it. Maybe I'll put in an annotation after I double check. Maybe I'm thinking wrong here, but that's why I rem that's why I think I remember anyway. But yeah, uh, the game has done pretty well sale wise, which I'm glad because those friggin' game didn't even stock the damn thing. So yeah, it's it's a real it's real good news like, and it's getting good reviews as well. Not as good as Xenoblade. I know I keep comparing it to Xenoblade, but it's part of the Operation Rainfall trilogy, if you will. So comparing is going to be inevitable. And I can't wait for Pandora's Tower. Pandora's Tower is actually getting the exact same um, collector's edition that uh, Last Story did with an art book and everything. Although it makes me wonder why Xenoblade didn't get a collector's edition. I mean, there was a thing you could buy the Classic Controller Pro with, which I guess came in this box, but that's stupidly rare now. But I'm kind of tempted to get it, actually. But I shouldn't anyway, but yeah. Last Story, fucking amazing. Highly recommend it, guys. More so than Binary Domain, okay? I'm going to come out and say that. The Sega fanboy is praising a Nintendo game over a Sega game. So, yeah, this game is fucking amazing. If you're not even a JRPG fan, go out and buy it. As well as Xenoblade as well. Xenoblade and this are awesome. And I, again, I can't wait for Pandora's Tower, but... Yeah, guys, that's it. So, see you after. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.